live in a body. serves us both our house and the vehicle that we use to go wherever we want to go that is our body we are not the body the body is ours that we use for the purposes of house that we be dwelled in and also a vehicle that we use. We relate with God, not with our body. We relate with God with our spirit. The part that is in the body, the very part also that God created. When the Bible says, when he created man, he says, let's let us make man in our image after our likeness and let man has dominion. The path that died when Adam sinned is this part of the spirit. So this, our spirit was connected to the devil after we sinned. So we were more conscious of the devil than we were of God. One of the reasons why we fear the devil more than God. And you want to you tell me you don't fear. But it's true. Unless you are so built up by the word of God, you will fear the devil more than God. Is that true? I want to hear what people say. You are more conscious of the devil more than of who? of God. Now that one happened after the fall of the man. That's why if you hear there's a demon here, there are houses that demons rule. In Nairobi town, somewhere, around Kiriopo, there's a house that is, nobody can enter because they said there's a demon. Gorofa Kubwa. I think some of us should go and own that place people fear to enter because there is how can the demon who does not have a body come and live in your house people fear now after we get born again we now become more conscious of God the same spirit I'm talking about who died when God says he will die to Adam he meant that spirit that spirit part that he put in man. That is the part that died to God so that it will not be conscious of God, but it will be more conscious of the devil. But now when we get born again, we begin now, we begin now becoming more conscious of God than of the devil. The more you put in the knowledge of the word of God in your heart, the more the fear of the devil dies out of your life. The more the fear of God increases in you. The more you become or becoming, you become alive to the fatherhood of God, the one that is in heaven. You begin understanding how powerful, how mighty, how great he is. Now your spirit begins growing in him. So you begin moving. Now one of the things that you need to know and you need to pray about, every time you hear the word of God, it should bring you closer to God. Hearing God, God's word does not automatically bring you close to God. In fact, there are some prayers that we need to make, some dangerous prayers, that shows that God, we are hungry for you and we need you. Every preaching that happens should move you closer to God and should make you stronger in God and should kill fear in you. The more conscious you become of God, the more strong you become in this life. And the more you take over the environment, the more... How can I put it? When, when Jesus came on earth, the devil told him, 
if you bow before me and worship me, I will give you this, the glory of this world. Jesus didn't tell him, this world does not belong to you. He didn't say that. Because the truth of the matter is, when he pushed down Adam, and then he took their dominion, the devil became the ruler of the whole world. The whole world. First, second, Corinthians 4 for the Bible says if our gospel be hid it is hidden from those that the God of this world has blinded their their eyes if our gospel be hid in other words all human beings were blinded at birth by this devil so that they never know God so that even when the word is preached have you realized people struggle to understand the Bible? And even to believe it? Ours, that is what it is meant by, that's what God meant when he said you will surely die. He didn't say you're going to die physically. He was talking about you are going to die spiritually. In other words, you become dead to me. You will not be conscious of me. That's what he meant. But now, after we get born again, the Holy Spirit is also introduced in us so that the Holy Spirit makes us more conscious of God. The Spirit lives in us. After we came back alive to Him, now we can know God. Now we can relate with Him. But one of the things that now God desires that each and every one should have his ability to hear God and to see what he does. I am hoping we are together. The ability to hear God and to see what he does. Anytime God comes to any man that he wants to use, it, he will open his eyes and his Which years are those? Not the physical one. The spiritual eye. And the spiritual ears. Until your spiritual eyes can see. Until you begin seeing God cannot lead you. He, talk, he asked Jeremiah, what do you see? After he called Jeremiah and he told him that I've appointed you to be a, a prophet. He showed him something. And then he asked him, what do you see? I see he says, I see the almond tree. And he explained some of the things he was seeing. And God said, now you have seen it well. In other words, he began seeing what God was showing him. After that, God said, whatever now you have seen, I will cause it to come to pass. Whatever you have seen, I will make it to come to, to pass. In other words, when your spirit comes alive to God, God has to show you. Your spiritual eyes have to open. You have to begin seeing what God is doing. You have to be hearing the voice of God even as you choose to do. Whenever God speaks, two things happen. And you? Oleg, you hear, and then you? Have you ever seen something as you are hearing somebody speak? Someone is explaining, for example, a black dog. Are you seeing a black dog? Are you seeing a black dog? After you hear what happens, you begin visualizing. If I say a mad person, do you see right now a mad person? You know, after you you hear and then you you see. when God speaks, He will cause you to see. 
And the one that sees is not the physical eyes, is the spiritual one. Eyes have never seen. Ears have never heard. The heart of man has not conceived. One. The heart of man has not conceived what God has for them that love. Loving. That is what he says. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. The heart of man. In other words, there are things that God has in his store for you. That your eyes have to do what? See. And your ears have to. And your heart has to. One, two. It is happening. Let me just continue with this one. So, what I'm saying is this. You have to come to a place where you begin seeing what, where God is leading you. In fact, this life, this life, if you can't be led by God, if God cannot open your eyes even to show you the future, David says, the secret of the Lord is with them that love him. Have you heard God say that? David said that. You just Google and see. He says, the secret of the Lord is with them that which secret is this? The sick, when you say to come to the secret of the Lord, he's talking about tomorrow. God does not lead you into a future that you don't know and you have not seen. I repeat this. God does not lead you into a future that you have not seen. If you feel that the future that you're going in is uncertain, your eyes have never been opened. If you begin seeing in pictures the future that God has for you, God will always open your eyes. Our future, even the next 50, 60 years, has already been laid down. But he has to open our eyes for us to do what? To work in it. Look at what Habakkuk said. Habakkuk chapter 1. Habakkuk chapter 1. Verse 1. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. Hmm? Do you see a burden? How can somebody say a burden? And he's talking about now if you go downwards and you read. He began seeing the problem that is hitting that nation for some times. And then in chapter number 2, he says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and I shall answer when I am reproved. This one is simply, in other words, it's simple, it's a simple word, simple word this man is saying. I will go and pray and I want to see what God will show me and what is going to speak to me about the state in chapter 1. The state in chapter 1 is a pathetic state where the nation of Israel is going into a lot of problems. So many issues happening. Bad things that you cannot talk about. He says, I want to go and this, I want to go and pray. And I want to see what he will tell me. I will see what God will tell me about this situation of that of the, the people that are here. 
Can you pray this prayer? Father, open my eyes. Let me see as you speak to me. In Jesus' name. We need to pray this prayer every day of our life. Let me see as you speak. Let me see. Let me see. If you will always see what God is about to do, you will have what God has for you. When Jesus died, everything about us was completed in the spirit realm. Our future was finished. Everything worked on and God packed it somewhere. Now somebody has to ask God if you read chapter number 2 of the book of Ephesians, I'm going to expose thing today we are having midweek service in the evening. Chapter 3. He says, what has been hidden from ages, from men, from angels, from devils. Paul say, God revealed it to me. Even what was, was hidden from the 12 apostles. In fact, he says there. It was revealed to who? Paul. And what, the, what was that? That the Gentile are going to be heirs of the salvation. The 12 disciples, even after Jesus telling them, you're going to preach from Jerusalem to Judea, Samaria, until the end of the world, they only remained in Samaria. They didn't go beyond Samaria. Because beyond Samaria is other nations of the world, other tribes of the world that need to hear the gospel. But they refused and they remained there for over 20 years. Paul came to preach. Paul received the, the light after 20 years of the 12 disciples preaching. And when that light hit him from heaven, one of the things that God told him, you are going to be my instrument among the Gentiles and the kings of the world. So he says in chapter number 2 of the book of Fishion, that what has been hidden from ages, from so many people, he says, has been revealed. Now, if God, listen, if people were working with Jesus, 12 of them even decided to make them his disciples, their eyes could not see what God has. Another man who is a persecutor of the church, God is opening his eyes. To see what the twelve disciples cannot see. God is not respecter of any person. Whoever desires to know him more will have the advantage. I repeat this. God is not respecter of in, in Kiswahili that means Mungu habagui. Yule <laughs> ambaye that person becomes great. In the Bible, if you study, everybody that was hungry for God became greater than those ones who were not hungry for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I repeat this statement. Those that had a hunger for God became greater than them that didn't have hunger for God. You can't be coming every morning, <laughs> coming to hear him and remain small. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I can't be a pastor that prays every morning and I become less than any pastors in their town. It is not, no, I'm saying no. I want you to know this. Paul became greater than the 12 disciples combined. Are you aware of that? He did what the 12 combined could not do. Because of the depth of desire that he had for God. More than the 12. Hmm? If you are a type that can humble yourself before him, you will see more than what anybody sees. You will do more than what anybody does. 
Huh? One thing that in fact we should continue praying is to be under his feet all the days of your life. All the days of your life. You will never be ashamed. You will never be embarrassed. You will never be small. You will, I'm saying you will. You will never. The day you are tired of his presence and the sleep becomes good to you, you have already fallen. I look a lot at Pastor Lai. This morning I was just watching him preach before he came here. That man has been standing like this for 40 years. No wonder he's built the biggest church in Kenya. Huh? <laughs> the biggest church. No wonder he built that. That church he built with over 400 million. You people need to go and see. You know, it cost 400 million in a car. Ngepo jenda Mombasa. Unione tole ujenda Mombasa. Unione tu. Awajenda Mombasa. Mbubu nione tu. Mangine wanajifanya wameenda. Mbubu nione. Mwanda kufika mbinguni bila kuenda Mombasa. If I were you, I would just go there and see. And okay, that, that church sits on two points, 2.3 acres of land. The inside, the inside, you see the, the, wameweka kama, ukuta wameweka kama fence. The inside, he, he, unana this space, need 2.1 acres. One of the engineers that we are studying with was given a job to do some, some work on the balcony. So we have 5,000 seater and then they are adding another 5,000. So, this church is a stadium in Pira. This church. We have to say that we have to say that we have to say that we church. Who is the church? Asina no Manchester on the chase. Na muna chosheka na hiki tu inakaa inabeba watu 200. Ama less. Na muna sema muna jua Mungu. Ah. You know that guy. He's been preaching like this every morning, every morning for 40 years. I want to I want to inspire you so that December to Nanda Mombasa. Nitafuti tu elfu kumi na tatu ni pati ya mimi dona kulipia rent. Sorry if if I na kwenye na kurudi kila kitu. Ni pati tu yako pesa. Save tu tatin kei only. Mimi zikulipi pesa. Kwenye na kurudi. Wewe 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 chipangi. Are you wewe chipangi mapema? I'm serious. We are going there. Last year I went with twenty people. I want to go with more people this year. Hata kama tunafunga hii church twende. Ende tu angalie tu venye mtu mwenye amekutana na Mungu chenye alifanya. They have 74 acres. They have only used 24 acres. The 50 acres is waiting. They have bought it how many years ago? Na yenyi mnakaa tu 100 by 100. 100 by 100. Na sasa unaona this is the biggest building. It is painful. I don't know how to speak it. It is painful. Ati unajua mungu. Unajua mungu. Mungu gani we? Na umefanya nini kama unajua mungu? That's the question I have for you. What, what do you? What have you done? Hmm? The Bible says, Them that know God shall be strong. And they shall do exploit. You, the knowledge of God that you have must cause you to do big things. If you are still small, you have not known God. You need to pray like you've never prayed. If the life you live is not challenging anybody around you, wake up. Amen. Yes. At least somebody should look at you and wonder. Somebody should look at you and wonder. 
they should at least see that you are doing the impossible that they are not able to do. That is when we know God is.